When I think about leaving my legacy, I think about leaving music that's just timeless, you know, that can be played from generation to generation. I remember sitting back after I wrote everything, I just said to myself, I finally did it. I wanted to show my true colors with full-on production, which is, for me, everything that I want to accomplish as a producer. So this one, probably the most fun record on the album. Everyone's been asking me for this one. I didn't think like this would go on my album originally. And I don't know why I thought that, but I was watching The Sopranos. This record comes on the original and uh, I'm like, shit, I forgot about that record. Like I forgot about that whole track and it happened so naturally. Like these parts just came together so easily. Uh, you know, it's just a classic groove, like a classic house groove that with a good vocal sample, you know, that's all it needed. It just needed that. And just the structure and just making sure like that hype stayed there was pretty much the basis of this record. And every time I play it or every time Eric plays it, it just, it's a fucking vibe. Like it's such a good vibe. Gets people dancing and kept like you know, you just start seeing people moving and, and having fun to it. I think another reason why I love this record is like, it, it, it just feels like a New York record to me. Reminds me of the city, it reminds me of the 90s, it just reminds me of like a good time in a club. And that's all I want my music to remind people of, you know, just a good time. Shake it out ass. Shit. It's crazy. Literally haven't been here since it's closed. I maybe even before it like yeah. closed, like before like because they had a, a rough run yeah. after Yeah, Icon never really made it from there. It yeah. Really yeah, no, once it turned Icon Lounge, that was it. I'll always call this building Deco Lounge. I'll never call it Icon. It's just how it is. So this is Deco Lounge. This is the second club. I ever got a shot of playing for the most part. Yeah, you would come in this room. Every Wednesday was Wildlife Wednesdays. That was a mix of everything. It was house music. It was, you know, uh, hip hop downstairs. You would still play hip hop in the main room too, but this place would be packed. You couldn't breathe in here. It was so busy. You could have a little bit of everything in one room and it just made sense. And this was like the only club I've ever experienced where you could hear a hip hop track and a house record in the same night and everyone was still vibing and it was still a good time. And like, I'm looking at these walls, I'm looking at the sound system, looking at everything and I'm just getting complete throwbacks from when I was a kid. I realized how grateful I was at that time to experience this because after this closed, there was nothing like it in uh, New Jersey at all. I'll never forget like the first big night I played here. They had um, Steve Aoki here, which is super weird for me to play before Steve Aoki when you think of it. But like in this room, it just worked. So I was playing Tech House and Techno before Steve Aoki came on. The fun experience was I was like the baby in the group. I was only 18 and all my other friends were in their mid 20s. So to show that I knew an older style of music or something that they could relate to is something special too. And I'll never forget the room just going off, like insane. Those are memories I'll just always never forget. They're, they're special. 